بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك هو تعالى كما ورد في سورة المؤمنون قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we are about to start with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 18th juz, summary of 18th juz. So far we have finished 17 juz of the Quran. And 18 juz actually starts with Surah Al-Mu'minun, then Surah Al-Nur, and then it starts, it basically starts Surah Al-Furqan, but Surah Al-Furqan continued in the 19th juz. So today, inshallah, we are going to look at Surah Al-Mu'minun and Surah Al-Nur. For Surah Al-Furqan, we are going to actually cover in the 19th Juz, Bi'ezn rahman inshallah. Surah Al-Mu'minun, uh, one of the most beautiful surah when it comes to, in terms of uh, telling the character or the character of the good people or the characteristics of the people of Jannah. Um, when it was revealed, Surah Al-Mu'minun, nothing can be said categorically, but from the content, it looks like that it was revealed around 7, 8, 9, 10th year of Meccan phase, um, almost the same time period when Surah Al-Furqan was revealed. Uh, in terms of content, we can say that. Um, uh, only the, uh, if, if you ask uh, what it is in Surah Al-Mu'minun, it's, it's a relatively big surah, it's a Meccan surah. Uh, only the practicing Muslims who, who, are, uh, who are learning the lessons from the previous nations. They are not associating partners with Allah and they are even practicing the laws of Islam. They will, and they believe in the oneness of Allah and on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they are the one who will go and inherit Jannatul Al-Firdaus. This is a topic of Surah Al-Mu'minun. Um, if in terms of theme or in terms of content, few beginning ayat which we are going to see today inshallah, very beautiful ayat in terms of character development. These ayat talks about characteristics of the good people. Then uh, later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses creation uh, and this is an argument given to idol worshippers that why you worship idols? I am the one who created you from so different, so many different phases you came as a human being. Uh, so then the stories of different prophets are mentioned, the story of Nuh alayhi salam, briefly Ad and Thamud and Shu'ib and Lut and even the discussion of Pharaoh is there. Um, then conclusion in conclusion of Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to the claims of the idol worshippers uh, and that just summarizes of the entire Surah Al-Mu'minun. So, in terms of a um, few important ayat from Surah Al-Mu'minun, it have to be the first few ayat from Surah Al-Mu'minun because these ayat tells us how a person can gain Jannah and not only a regular Jannah, a Jannah to Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us Firdaus. Ameen Ya Rab. For those of you who, for those of you who don't know what is Jannah al Firdaus, Jannah, we, we Muslims believe that paradise heaven is, is Jannah. Um, but there are different levels in paradise. The prophets will be at the highest level, then the regular people. The highest level of Jannah, the highest level of Jannah, Al-A'la, Darjatul A'la, the highest level of Jannah is actually Jannah al-Firdaus. Again, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us Jannah al-Firdaus, to give us the company of the prophets, to give us the company of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want to get the highest level of Jannah, you have to do these things. And this is so important for anyone of us who is looking to get Jannah al-Firdaus because there are so many books, so many hadiths, and they all are beautiful. But this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how you can gain that Jannah al-Firdaus according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is extremely important. You cannot get more authentic content than this because it's Quran itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflah al-mu'minun. Qad aflah al-mu'minun. Certainly the believers have succeeded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are a believer, you will succeed and you will have these attributes. So the first condition which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want to get Jannah al-Firdaus, is al-lazina hum fi salatihim khashi'un. If you want to get Jannah al-Firdaus 
pray with khushur. Allah says, Allazina hum fi salatihim khashiyun. Those people who pray with utmost humility, with utmost humbleness, with submissiveness, with full concentration. I don't want to torture you with the Arabic terms, but khushu literally means complete humility, full concentration. You are paying attention to your prayers, nothing else. That is the prayer which will take us to Jannat al -Firdaus. So basically, if we want Jannat al -Firdaus, it's not only a requirement for us to pray five times a day. It's actually a requirement to pray those salah, to pray those prayers in the best possible way. Then we can gain Jannat al -Firdaus. So it's not only that, uh, enough for you to actually just pray five times a day, that's it. But to improve the quality, consistently increase the humbleness and concentration and focus in that salah, that will take us to Jannat al -Firdaus. And because it takes us to Jannat al -Firdaus, I just want to take a few minutes, two, three minutes, how to increase the khushu, subhanAllah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying if you want to get Jannat al-Firdaus, you have to go into the desert or mountain and stay there for 10 years. No, it's very simple. If you want to get Jannat al-Firdaus, wherever you are, just pray five times a day and pray with full concentration as much as you can. That's that's a, that's a easy requirement, subhanAllah. There's no rocket science in it to get us to Jannat al-Firdaus, subhanAllah. How, how we pray, subhanAllah, versus how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to pray. Subhanallah, when we stand for prayer, our body is in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But where our mind is, where our heart is, is our heart really attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is our mind really focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wallahi, when we are praying, we are thinking too much about all other things. We are thinking about Facebook and Instagram. We are thinking about our business and job. We are thinking about the economy. We are thinking about the, if you are praying it during the fasting, you are thinking about iftar and so on and so forth. But subhanAllah, when you are praying, you are actually, did you ever notice when you are praying, you are standing like this, you are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just think about it for a minute. You know, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, a famous, famous scholar, he said this, when a person stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he prays but his mind diverts his mind diverts so his body is standing in front of Allah and his mind diverts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at that time when you are praying to him but your mind is not there Allah says ila aina abdi ila aina abdi ya ibn adam ila man taltafit Oh my servant, where are you going? You are standing in front of me, but you are thinking about something else. Where are you going, oh my servant? Ila khayrum minni. Did you find something better than me? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Just imagine when we are praying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are thinking about all other things. Basically, it's a manifestation that those all other things are better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we are thinking about those things, although we are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ila khayrum minni, did you find something better than me? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the appreciation that we are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I'm saying this, don't think that I'm the most spiritual person. Even I'm struggling with khushu. You should make dua for me that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the ability to increase the humility in the prayers and I will make dua for all of you inshallah. Uh, just this basic how to increase the khushu. Uh, I know there are books are being written on this topic. I guess it, the Rajab have a very good book on this. Uh, but just few points. One, know the meaning of what are you praying. Most of us does not know Arabic and we recite this in a foreign language. The Fatiha and all the Surah and the Tasbihat. Know the meaning. When you will know the meaning, it will come from heart. And it will increase the concentration. Um, don't rush. Don't rush. These are the 5 to 10 minutes you are giving in 2, 3, 4 hours. You do not have to rush, subhanAllah. Just take your time in sujood. Take your time in prostration. Take your time in bow. Take your time when you are standing in front of Allah. Just a few extra minutes and you will see a huge impact will come into your life. And furthermore, you will get Jannat al-Firdaus. As Allah says, if you want to get Jannat al-Firdaus, you have to improve your prayers. 
um, environment should be quite uncomfortable. That's also one of the uh, one of the key things. You're, if your kids are watching cartoon and you are praying right next to them, it doesn't work like that. Subhanallah. Um, defy distraction. If there is any distraction, because Shaitan wants you to get distracted while you are praying. So if you are thinking about uh, if you are praying and if you are thinking about those things which were lost in your house, Shaitan will come and Shaitan will guide you to those lost things while you are praying. What you have to do the immediately, immediately when these thoughts will come in your mind while praying about something other than Salah, say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. Uh, pray as it's your last salah. That's also beautiful advice uh, given by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And perhaps this is the last thing because because we don't have time. We have to move forward. To increase the khushu and humility, you have to uh, pray at every salah as it's your last prayer. Subhanallah. So, um, uh, salat mu'addain. Pray every salah as it's your last prayer. Subhanallah. Just imagine. Just imagine how it will going to impact your quality of prayer. If God forbid. God forbid. If doctor comes to you and says that I checked your report and you have highest the last stage of cancer and you will die within a week so you have five salah every day so 35 salah for a week left in your life what do you think if you will get chance to pray those salah what will be the quality of those 35 salah knowing that these are my last prayer in my life versus the salah which you have prayed before this news the quality, the length, each and everything will be different because you know these are my last prayer. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu says, pray every salah as it's your last prayer so that you can take full attention and concentration. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that love and concentration and focus in our prayer inshallah so we can enjoy the prayer and we can make it a life-changing experience for all of us inshallah ta'ala. Then, um, so first condition for getting Jannatul Firdaus, Allahumma ja'alna minhum ameen ya Rabb. Uh, for one of the first condition is that they not only pray, they pray with full concentration. This is first condition. Second, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُورِدُونَ Second condition is, those who stay away from the lagv, useless things. This is the second condition to get Jannatul Firdaus. From Allah, from Allah. These people stay away from useless things. Lagv is useless things. It's interestingly, Allah did not say they stay away from the shameless things or haram things. That is normal requirement. But if you want to get Janatul Firdaus, you even have to stay away from the useless things, which might not be category, categorically, we can say it's haram, but it's neither halal nor haram, but it will just waste your time. So this is if you want to get general for those, stay away from useless things. Subhanallah. You know, whatever things take takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, that's love, that useless things. Subhanallah. Um, whatever things waste your time, in the neither it's beneficial in dunya nor it's beneficial in akhirah. That's useless thing. That's love of thing. Um, you know, subhanallah, nowadays we have so many gadgets. This, 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 this cell phone, wallahi, this is one of the biggest source of love. I know there are so many things you can do, so many positive things you can do from it, even on social media. But no, you have to agree with me. Most of the people use this social media, phone, WhatsApp, in a negative way, in a negative way. SubhanAllah. So these are the people who want to get a general for those. They are smart people. They don't waste their time in the useless things, SubhanAllah. Um, you know, which, which tells us one thing, subhanAllah, that if you want to get a Jannatul Firdaus, you cannot be a social media pundit or Facebook commentator commenting on each and everything. Stay away from those things. And actually this surah, this, this attribute is related to the next surah, Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur talks about the accusation of Aisha, which is coming uh, very soon in today's session. And the hypocrites they accuse our mother Aisha and Allah says, this is plain slander. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, a surah before, stay away from useless things. Because when you are in the useless things, then eventually you will take the next step and the next step you will accuse people, you will do this, you will do that, stay away from useless things. That's the second characteristic of the people of Jannat al-Firdaus. Third characteristic, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ There are two translations possible. Third condition for getting Jannat al-Firdaus according to Allah, that they are the people who give zakah. That's a one possible translation. Second, 
zakah here is used as literally which means zakah means cleaning so other translation will be they are constantly in the process of cleaning their heart this also actually um, there is a room for this literal meaning also and both the meanings are being taken by scholars so basically third possible translation is either they give zakah or they are constantly in the process of cleaning their heart and it, which actually is a goes with the relationship with the previous one previous one says they stay away from all the useless thing then the question comes where they're spending time if they are staying away from useless thing they're spending time in actually all those things which will clean their heart now what what, what are those things which will clean, clean our heart? Coming close to Quran. Quran will clean your heart. Understanding of the Quran, recitation of the Quran, acting on the Quran. Staying with a good good company. Stay away from the bad crowd. Stay with the good crowd. Coming to the masjid. And you have, subhanAllah, so many other things. Zikr, zikr of Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prayers, uh, reading books, listening to lectures. Uh, all these things are going to clean your heart, subhanAllah. Obviously, when you think about listening to lectures and reading book, stay away from the academic, all those lectures which uh, don't necessarily clean the heart, but it gives you knowledge without tazkiyah. That is only for academia purposes. When it comes to cleaning the heart, you have to use something, listen to something which will clean your heart, uh, which will hit your heart and melt your heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our hearts melt. Ameen, Ya Rab. Cleaning from jealousy, they don't feel jealous from anyone, cleaning from arrogance and ego. They don't think that we are better than anyone else, cleaning from hypocrisy. So they are constantly in the process of cleaning the heart because they need Jannatul Firdaus. So Allah mentioned about praying with prayer with focus to get Jannatul Firdaus. Then Allah mentioned staying away from useless things. Then Allah mentioned cleaning of the heart or giving zakah. Fourth, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِذُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ عَزْوَاجِهِمَا أُمَّا مَلَكَتَ إِيمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومٍ these are the people who guard their privates. Ay, 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 ay. The hardest thing for all of us right now because we are living in 2020, access to zina, access to shamelessness, access to pornography is so easy for all of us, subhanAllah. This, this phone is so dangerous, subhanAllah, with these 4G, 5G devices, subhanAllah. Each and everything is available in one click and you can exp it's very hard nowadays to protect your privates. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us from zina, from fornication and to protect our progeny from zina. Ameen Ya Rab. Allah says if you want to get Jannat al firdaus no rocket science, stay away from zina. Just protect your privates. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say here if you want to get Jannat al firdaus you don't take out your sexual desires. No, Allah says be disciplined in your sexual desire. Allah says, these are the people who get who want to get Jannatul for those. They are the people who, who take out their sexual desires with their spouses. They don't take out without their spouses. Um, that That is an in integral part, subhanAllah. They don't do zina. By, by this ayah, it means they don't do zina. Uh, they don't uh, have girlfriend-boyfriend relationship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect, protect all of us from zina. Ameen, Ya Rab. Wallahi, uh, if, 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 if uh, we are bringing discipline in our life in terms of uh, sexual desires also, this will going to bring us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very different than other religions. In other religion, if you want to be a spiritual person, they ask you not to get married in some of the other religions. In Islam, your spirituality will be completed by getting married, as said by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that you will complete half of your faith once you will believe, uh, once you will going to get married. Subhanallah, you'll complete half of your faith once you will going to get married. Subhanallah, this is hadith. Even when you have that relationship with your spouse, Rasulullah says you get a reward for that. And one of the Sahaba asked uh, Rasulullah, how can we get reward for that relationship? And Rasulullah sallallahu said. Tell me one thing, if you will do this in a haram way, with girlfriend boyfriend relationship, will you get a sin? And Sahaba says yes. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if you're doing it in a halal and permissible way, then you will get a reward for it, SubhanAllah. So even with that relationship in Islam, it regards as a good thing, as, a, as an act of reward, SubhanAllah. 
we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make the marriages easy so that we can make zina difficult. Nowadays, zina is easy because marriage, nikah, is extremely difficult. So this is con condition of getting Jannah al firdaus وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ Second last condition, if you want to get Jannah for those, then these are the people who fulfill their trust and fulfill their promises. This is also one of the important aspects from the characteristic of, characteristic of the believer. That fulfill your promise, fulfill your trust, subhanAllah. When I see the people will say, oh, when Muslims uh, don't do business with Muslims, when Muslims will say, inshallah, it means it's never happening. Wallahi, these things break the heart. That we are the people who claim that we want Jannah for those. And Allah is putting this condition that if you want Jannah for those, one of the things which you have to do is that you have to fulfill your trust and promises, subhanAllah. When you say that, okay, nikah will be at 9 p.m. and dinner will be at 10 p.m. on your wedding card, you make sure that nikah happens at 9 p.m. and dinner happens at 10 p.m., subhanAllah. How about Muslim wedding, subhanAllah? What about that joke of Muslim standard time, subhanAllah? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab. Anas radiallahu anh said, I served Prophet Muhammad sallallahu for 10 years. And he said almost all the time when Prophet gave a sermon, almost 10 years. And in all those 10 years, when Prophet gave a sermon, he would say, La imana liman la amanata lahu wa la deena liman la ahda lahu. He says he would not finish his speech without saying this, that there is no faith in that person who doesn't fulfill his, his trust. There is no religion, there is no religiousness in that person if he doesn't fulfill his promise. SubhanAllah. And we ignore all these aspects because we are too much ritualistic, SubhanAllah. See, Allah did not say how to get general for those you have to have the longest beard. Although I have a beard, Alhamdulillah. Um, or you have to pray in this or that way. Allah says some of those things which we don't pay attention. Which we don't pay attention, SubhanAllah. Praying with khushu, staying away from useless things. Staying away from zina and protecting your private and fulfilling your promises. And Allah ends this passage of Jannah al-Firdaus. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ And they who carefully maintain their prayers. They who carefully maintain their prayers. It's not, see, the passage of Jannah al-Firdaus started with the quality of the prayers and the passage of Jannah al-Firdaus ended with the amount of the prayers. So basically quality and quantity both are important but first Allah mentioned the quality and then Allah is also mentioning the quantity. Those people who pray five times a day and they guard their yuhafizun, they are worried about their prayers so they are constantly praying five times a day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to pray five times a day with khushu, with humility. Ameen Ya Rab. Then Allah says, أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِسُونَ الَّذِينَ يُرِسُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ These are the people who will have these characteristics. These are the inheritors. These are the people who will inherit. And these are the people who will inherit for those who will inherit Jannatul for those I hai hai hai. Um fiha khalidun and they will be there forever. Allahumma ja'alna bin hum ameen ya rab. Iza sa'altum allahul jannah fas'aluhul for those. You know sometimes you will think oh I'm so sinful I'm so messed up. How can I ask even Jannatul for those? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's messenger said this, listen to this. Allah messenger said, whenever you are asking dua, ask for the excellent. Don't ask for the bare minimum. Allah's messenger said, whenever you ask for Jannah, I want you to ask for the highest level of Jannah, that's Jannah the Firdaus. فَإِنَّهُ أَعْلَى الْجَنَّةِ Ask for the highest possible level of Jannah. He was teaching us to be optimistic, not pessimistic. He was teaching us to go for the excellence, not for the bare minimum, subhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us Jannah al-Firdaus. Ameen, Ya Rab. Surah Al-Nur. It's a beautiful surah. It talks about um, the accusation of Aisha. Um, anha. It was revealed in Medina. It was revealed in Medina. So something different than the previous surahs. In the sixth year uh, after the battle of Bani Mustariq. Uh, Content-wise, um, uh, the good chunk of Surah Al-Nur deals with accusation on our mother Aisha. And Allah's response to that, that this is a plain slander, what hypocrites are saying. Um, so basically that, that deals with the first half of the surah. Uh, Aisha, by the way, those of you who don't know, Aisha is the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Second half of surah al deals with the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Allah nur samawati wal We don't have time for the summary of that. Uh, and then some social laws again, and this just sums up surah al -Nur. 
uh, I will just share one ayah, but before that, let me tell you the relationship of this surah with the previous surah, Surah Al-Mu'minun. Surah Al-Mu'minun discusses the characteristics of some of the great people, which we just covered. Surah Al-Nur is asking them to implement those characteristics. Okay, staying away from useless things, stay away from accusing others. It's, uh, protect your privates, and Surah Al-Nur also talks about keep guarding your privates and so on and so forth. Uh, story. Uh, of the slander of Aisha, it's just it's a big thing. But just I, I want to tell you uh, what 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 goes on in the Muslim community. Subhanallah. See, when Muslim community in Medina was growing, and Rasulullah was becoming popular, and um, hypocrites, the troublemakers within Muslim community, these are the troublemakers within the Muslim community. They were looking at the ways to bring down Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because they could not take it that Rasulullah sallallahu is becoming so popular locally in Medina, and you have to keep this in mind that after fifth year of Hijri, fifth year in Medina, when Battle of Trench happened, trenches, and Meccan people came with full force and they had to leave, um, and now now the outside enemies are not a problem for Muslims because they came and they could not do anything and Muslims are growing in Medina they are getting powerful they are getting stabilized so the outside enemy is not a problem so now this is an attack from the inside enemy an inside enemy will attack in a different way than outside enemy so hypocrites are looking at the ways to bring down Rasulullah status to accuse him or to scand put his scandal and so on and so forth and eventually they found something uh, hypocrites hypocrites uh, by the way, this is a incident that Aisha Siddiqa was in in one of the journeys with Rasulullah and they were coming back from the journey and Rasulullah and the Sahaba, they came early and they they thought that Aisha is with them but Aisha actually went to use restroom and Aisha came back and they realized that actually Kar Karawan left so she was waiting in her camp and one of the Sahaba who was in charge of looking back after the Karawan will leave that if there is someone who who, who is left behind you can bring him his, this Sahaba name was Safan bin Ma'attal radiallahu an, famous companion. So he saw that Aisha Siddiqa, mother of believers radiallahu anha, she was sleeping in the camp and uh, she, he, he Safan bin Ma'attal actually uh, brought Aisha Siddiqa, mother of believers, with him. So when they both were coming to the Medina, uh, the hypocrites saw them and they started gossiping. And those gossips start to tarnish the reputation and they said that they put the accusation of Aisha, ma'adallah, ma'adallah, that she must have done something wrong. And this accusation jolted Medina and Muslim community because when you are accusing leader, then basically it just, just, just jolted the entire Muslim community, subhanAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah An-Nur and removed this accusation from Aisha. Imagine the high status of Aisha Siddiqa of the Allah subhanAllah. Uh, Aisha used to take pride a lot on these ayat that Allah revealed ayat for me uh, in Surah Al-Nur subhanAllah. Um, and then those people uh, who, who were hypocrites, they are also exposed badly. So it turned out to be a good experience for Muslim, even though apparently they thought it, it, it's a disaster, but it had a happy ending for the Muslim community subhanAllah. Um, so one ayah, if I have to share the subhanAllah, uh, out of so many things, um, although this this sort of note talks about gender interaction also, but I would I would say that um, I have a book written on this uh, principles of man woman interaction in Islam. Uh, this talks this book talks about the tafsir of Surah Nur also uh, briefly briefly. This book has predominantly contemporary fiqh issues, so you can read this book. It's available on Amazon. Principles of man woman interaction in Islam. But if I have to share one ayah with you because of the time, I'll share this ayah. Um, actually, subhanAllah, we are done with the time, but I'll just share anyway. We'll take two, three extra minutes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Aisha was accused, and then Allah will re Allah removed the accusation from Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu that it's a plain slander and nothing, it's far from reality. Aisha's father, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he had a relative, Mistah bin Usasa. Mistah bin Usasa. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, used to help him financially. Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, used to help him financially. And this relative was poor. He used to receive checks from Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh. And when this news broke out, Mistah bin Usasa unfortunately was the one who was part of this accusation. That he was accusing Aisha also. 
even though he was a relative of Aisha and Abu Bakr, even though he was receiving constant financial help from Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, but he was part of that gossip. When Abu Bakr saw the ayat were revealed, now Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anh, and the entire Muslim community is happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's just a plain slender. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, I would never, he promised, I would never help Mustah bin Usasa again financially. How can, how, what kind of relative he is? He's accusing my daughter. I was helping him every month. When he took this promise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Abu Bakr with saying, Ulul fadli minkum wassa'a. That the people who are virtuous among you, the people who have a wealth among you, they should give, they should not hold back from the people who are their close relatives or from the people who are poor. They should not hold back. And if you are thinking, how can I give now money to these people who are accusing my daughter? How can I continue helping? Wallahi, this is the hardest thing for Abu Bakr Siddiq. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just forgive them and turn the page over. If you will forgive them, Allah will forgive you. Don't you like that, Abu Bakr? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Can you imagine this, Subhanallah? Would you not like that Allah will forgive you? And this is why we should forgive people. When Abu Bakr heard this ayah, he says, Bala, Wallahi, ana nuhib an lana rabbana. Indeed, I would love that Allah will forgive my sins. I'm forgiving. And Abu Bakr started giving uh, financial assistance to that relative again. He, he accused his daughter. He accused your daughter and now you are being asked by Allah to continue financial support, subhanAllah. We have some of the grievances in our heart. We hate one of our cousin, we hate someone in the masjid, we hate someone in our family. And so for small, small reasons, even there are big reasons, let's say, they cannot be as big as someone is accusing me and my daughter. This is more sensitive than accusing me also. And Allah is asking to forgive them. SubhanAllah. And Allah is also saying why you have to forgive and how you have to forgive. First Allah says how you have to forgive. Not only you have to forgive them. Allah says Wal yasfahu. You don't only have to forgive people. You have to forgive and you have to turn the page over. So basically if I can see Surah to Fatir right now. I can see right now. Turn the page over means if I'm going to turn the page over. Now I have turned the page over to Surah Yaseen. So I cannot see Surah Fatir anymore. Turn the page over. Don't dig the graves of the past. Just ignore, shift, delete the memory. Allah And why you have to forgive? Because you want Allah to forgive your sins, right? You don't have to forgive because they are special. No, 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 no. You have to forgive because you want Allah to forgive your sins by the virtue of you forgiving others. You want Allah to be compassionate on you by the virtue on manifesting that compassion to others. Wallahi, it's easy to talk, but it's hard to implement. That one brother or one sister who have a rift and animosity with you, make an intention right now. Make an intention right now. You will forgive them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive each and every one of us so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive us and we can have a beautiful sleep and a positive life because this life is a small. I don't want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this negativity. I don't want to give negative space into my small positive heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that ability. To follow the Sunnah of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Jazakum Allah khairan. Please stay safe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us from this coronavirus and bring us back inshallah to the masjid once coronavirus is removed. And inshallah we can see the face of beloved brothers and sisters in our community inshallah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.